Hey there, this is Akshay Nadan. Welcome back to the second part of this complete Dart Fundamentals course and I hope that you like the first video. In the first video, we learned about data types and variables, right? So I hope that you got a good hands on with data types and variables. You also referred documentation of Dart and you also studied more about data types and variables, right? So this, uh, this was your homework. I did not mention because I expected it by default from you, right? But in this video, I'm going to tell you that whenever I teach a topic in this video, I'm not covering 100%, right? You cannot ever cover 100% in a video, right? I may cover 70%, 60%. Rest you have to complete by your own practice, right? So let's go and learn list and maps, right? In this video, we already saw in the first part, what is a list and what is a map and how you define it, right? And how you also define the uh, data type of the list and map over here in the triangular brackets. In this video, we are going to see more properties of these two data types, right? So we already have fruits and we already have a, a fruits list. We already have a my data map, right? So first of all, what you need to do is fruits is the name of my list. I know that. So what I'm going to do is to see what all operations I can do with my fruits list. I'm going to write fruits dot and then a suggestion box will appear in front of you. These are all the operations that are already coded in Dart and you can just utilize these operations, right? These are already pre-written functions. You can just use them. So we are going to see a few, a few of them which are very important and rest of them you can explore on your own, right? So <coughs> first of all, what we need to do is there is mango and apple, but soon I realized that, hey, banana is also my favorite fruit. So what I'm going to do is fruits dot add and then write banana, right? Perfect. And now if I just run the script, mango, apple and banana, I assume mango, apple and banana, right? This fruits has banana element also now, right? Now what I need to do is I want to add, Hey, I don't uh, just want to add banana. I also like guava then, or I also like grapes. Then you cannot write it like this. You cannot write it like this. You can only have one element over here, right? But what you can do is you can just remove it. You have to use a different function called add all, <coughs> right? And in this provide a, a, another list and here write your other three fruits, right? And then run it. Mango, apple, banana, guava and grapes. You are see, you can see, right? You can see the complete result, right? So using add and using add all, you can add another elements into your previous list, right? And make sure that you don't define again list of fruits over here. These add and add all function don't return anything. They just add the elements into your list. You don't need to like reassign fruits to this function. I hope I'm clear, right? Now, another function that I want you to know about of list is fruits. Let's say I want to sort this list. What do you mean by sorting? Apple should come first, then banana like this in like alphabetical order, right? <coughs> Let's do it. So what I want to do is I want to say sorted fruits, right? And I also want to print this fruits, right? And let's put a semicolon. So the sorted is a function that I remember, but maybe you did art versioning. Let's run it. Yes. So I can see the error sorted is not found. So let's see if there is fruits dot sort. Yes, we have fruits dot sort and I guess this will work. <coughs> let's run it. Yes. So now I can see apple, banana, grapes, guava and mango. So now this is in alphabetical order and my map, my data map is also the fruits uh, in the my data is also in alphabetical order, right? So uh, my mistake, it is fruits dot sort. That means list dot sort is going to sort your list. 
here also I'm not reassigning my fruits list. I hope I'm clear. Now let's see another function. So let's write fruits dot and the next function that I wanted you to know is clear. So I'm not going to show it clear basically like resets your list. It is going to set your list as empty list, right? Contains is a very good uh, function. Let's see it. <coughs> so contains actually returns Boolean, right? Whether it, uh, whether this element is there in your uh, list or not. So fruits dot contains, if I say banana and I like this, and I have to assign some Boolean values. So Boolean val is equal to, or we have to see which, uh, yeah, so it is going to return a Boolean value, whether banana is there in my list or not. And then finally, I want to print my val. Let's run it. <coughs> True, banana is there. If I say, uh, I can't remember any fruit, uh, let's say, grapes black black grapes maybe uh, if i just run it then this will be returning false because grapes black i don't like i i like green grapes or grapes right so this was all about fruits dot contains now a very very important function about list fruits <coughs> dot where this is a where function so what is going to take it is going to take a uh where means, so what happens in where is, it is going to return me the index of the value which I'm going to test it, which I which I want it to find, right? So where, where is banana located? What is the index of this banana, right? So let's see. <coughs> so where it is going to take a element so I'm going to say, not like this, element. Now what is an element? So every this, this is an element, this is an element, this is an element, right? I'm going to say, wherever my element, so it is going to iterate my list. It is going to go through every element in my list and see, hey, this is banana, this is banana, or is this banana, right? So element, if my element equal to equal to banana, then I'm going to store that result so var result. So here I defined var, right? See, this is a complete function. Var. I don't know what it is going to return. I forgot. What is the data type of this function, right? Re uh, return function, right? So I say var variable. I don't know your data type. So var. I'm, and I'm going to finally print my result. <coughs> right? Like this. And let's see what we get. It's running. I have banana. So what it has returned me is, it has said, okay, banana is there. So it has returned me a result. And if I just hover over it, so, and you can see the documentation. So I'm going to read it for you. So documentation, now it is, it is visible to you. So what it says is, uh, the matching elements have the same order in the return iterable as they have the iterator. Yes, got it. So what it returns is, it is going to see whether my element is equal to banana, then it is going to return that element, right? Now, if I say grapes black, and if I run it, then let's see what we get. Empty, so see, empty. So this is an iterator. This is not, it is an iterable, right? This is not a list. So what I can do is if I just convert it into a list, dot to list, then you will see a list over here. This is an iterable. This is not a list, right? I'm going to run it. Now you will see a empty list. See, <coughs> because grapes black was not found. Now if I make grapes, then it is going to return me uh, grapes. And now I'm going to also show you one more thing. If element is equal, is equal to grapes or, so this is an or, right? <coughs> so I, what I want to say is, if my element is, is equals to grapes or if my element is equal to uh, apple, then return me that iterable or return me that list, right? So I'm going to say if my element is equal to is equal to apple, right? Are you able to see the complete function over here, right? So this I wanted to say. 
So if my element is equal to grapes or if my element is equal to apple, then I'm going to save that in a result. I'm going to run it and let's see what we get. We are going to get apple and grapes. Perfect. I hope that you liked this concept, right? Now let's see few concepts of map also. So I'm going to uh, re remove all these print statements, right? And then finally we are going to work on this my data, right? So we were already printing, we are already printing my data. So I'm going to keep it as it is. I'm going to print my data. And let's say now I'm only interested in knowing the name, the name, name field. This is a field, this is a key, this is a field, right? So print my data at, this is called an at, right? My data at this key, at this field. Which field? Name field and put a semicolon at the end, right? And let's run it. Akshay, right? If I say age, then 21, right? So this is going inside this my data and getting that field value. This is a value, this is a key, this is a field, right? So it is going inside my data and getting that field. This is the meaning of this square brackets right and you can do multiple things with your uh, my data also so if i want to print all the keys then what you're going to do print my data dot keys right and convert this complete thing into a list right so dot to list and put a semicolon run it and you will see so name, age, male and fruits are my keys. Now if I just print this, sorry, copy it, paste it and say values and run it, then you will see. So action 21 true and this thing is my values list. <coughs> are you with me? I hope that I'm clear, right? And then this keys and values have become list and now you can do anything with this keys and list, right? And here also we have multiple things. You can just explore it on your own. Put dot and you can see the length of this. Then what are the values? We already saw that. Then you can clear it. Then you can contain key. So this is going to return true or false. Whether this is my data. So let's see this last function. Contains key and put name over here. Right? And I'm going to print this result. Right? So it is going to, it is going to go and check whether uh, this contains name key or not, right? So let's run it. True, name is there. Now if I say clothes and if I just run it, it is going to say false. I hope you like this video. We saw a couple of functions on list and key, uh, list and maps. Of course, we can't see all, but definitely we are going to see a lot of them in this complete course, right? So till the next content, keep coding, keep innovating and thanks a lot.